Welcome to this webinar. I'm Deb Rocky, your hostess, and I'm a professional developer with ESU8 in Neely, Nebraska. Uh, today we're going to explore the writing notion of show don't tell. And uh, show don't tell uh, refers to any type of narrative writing or descriptive writing. And as you can see from my introductory slide here, uh, we are going to focus on descriptive writing today and the show don't tell notion. Showing for some reason is a more difficult skill for the writer to uh, e express and get down on paper uh, because the telling is one of the hardest habits to erase from your writing style. It's so easy to tell and just uh, assume that your reader is going to read into that and know just all of the details that you're going to add all of the either the sensory details uh, the the adverbs adjectives stronger verbs that you're going to use but it, unless you actually uh, focus on the idea of show don't tell um, showing is so much more interesting uh, than writing uh, that tells us because you know it's really worth the extra work to do that. Um, I'm going to share with you some tips and ideas on that so uh, it's really ha there is some good news about show don't tell it's really pretty easy to show if you learn just one one trick and that one trick is the idea that you need to be more specific uh, specificity will fill the gaps from your telling and bring to life your writing. It'll create uh, those pictures in the minds of the, your readers of what is actually happening within your writing. Um, let's begin with this descriptive writing prompt. And I want to help break this prompt down and give you a little bit of uh, insight into this prompt as to how we make it our writing be a showing rather than a telling. The first thing that this prompt tells us is, is that we're supposed to think about a special place. And a special place, uh, they give some suggestions um, which are highlighted here about some place around your home or school or some place you may have gone, a field trip or a place you went with your family. Um, those special places that are listed here are specifically just other ideas that the writer might use in order to stimulate their thinking. Uh, their special place may not be any one of those listings, and it's not incorrect if they don't actually use one of these suggestions to identify their special place which they're going to write about. Um, then the th what the prompt does here is that tells them what genre they're actually going to write in. Here it clearly identifies that they're going to describe it and then it asks them in the second paragraph to write a description. So this is real important information also to the writer. Now if we're going to describe what it tells us also in the second sentence of the prompt in the second paragraph is that you need to use your five senses to help describe the place for the, the reader. Um, the five senses, as you know, and I have them underlined here, they identify them within the prompt, is that uh, seeing, uh, well, hearing, uh, smelling, tasting, all of those kinds of things. Because this prompt specifically identifies what it looks like or what you might see, the sounds you might hear, or any smells that would help describe this place to you. So now if you look at, the writer looks at this, they know what they have to do. They have to write a descriptive piece about a special place and they know that the, how they have to do it. They have to use their five senses to help them describe that place for the reader. So it's real important, teachers and writers, that you actually unpack the writing prompt before you ever get started with it. And that's a real great skill to teach your students as well. Let's get into the writing prompt and let's see what's happening. I have for you right now uh, a telling example. And follow along while I read this telling example to you. They went on vacation to see the Black Hills. 
They all enjoyed it very much. When they tried to go home, their car's engine light was on. They stayed another night and decided to spend their time at the hotel pool while their car was fixed. Now, what questions come to mind to you uh, as, as I read this, this piece? Um, there are some vague details that are found within this, this particular piece. For instance, I might point out, who is they? We have no idea who they is, how many is they, and all that kind, kind of stuff. Um, we know that they enjoyed their vacation to the Black Hills. We don't know how long they stayed in the Black Hills. We do know that they had car trouble when they were ready to go home, and, but we don't know how they solved their car trouble problem and that part of the solution for the car trouble problem was that they stayed another night and uh, they enjoyed their time at the hotel pool while the car was being, being fixed. Um, so when you look at this telling example, is this writing specific enough? Well, the answer is no, not at all. It, it's very vague. It's just a listing. It's a telling of what they actually, uh, what actually happened. There are no details, no specificity within this particular piece. Um, let's look at this showing example here and follow along while I read this one. The James family drove to the Black Hills for a vacation. They got there and saw many sights. They took many pictures and enjoyed their time together. When they were ready to leave, the engine light on the car was lit up. Father James decided to take the car to a dealership to get it fixed. When the mechanic looked at the car, he found out what was wrong. He told Father they could fix the car, but they did not have the part the car needed. He then told Father they could get the part, but it would not be here until tomorrow. So the James family was given a loaner car from the dealership and they found a hotel to stay for the night. Luckily, the hotel they found had a great pool with a great view of Mount Rushmore in the distance. The next day, the dealership fixed the car and the James family rode home, drove home. Now, do you remember the questions that I asked when we looked at this telling example? I, I asked, um, who is they? And what did they do while they were in the Black Hills? Now, if you look at this example, it tells us who they are. We know that they're the James family right now. Uh, we still don't know what they saw and what they did, but we do know that they took pictures and they really enjoyed their time together as a family. What mm -hmm. we do have more showing about, though, is... Uh, about the engine light being on the car and how that was fixed. We know that a mechanic looked at the car, uh, specifically at the dealership. We knew that they could fix it, and uh, but we know the part wasn't there. And But the good news was they could get the part the next, uh, to have it be there the next day. Um, and we also know that in order to be able to fix the car, the family was given a loaner car from the dealership. They stayed at a hotel, they had a great pool where they stayed, and they could uh, view Mount Rushmore in the distance. Um, and we know that they motored back home. We do know that much. It provides you, the reader, with insights and details. Now, obviously, there's more that needs to be added to this story. Um, this version has not yet included all the vaguely provided details of the telling example, um, but there's still more room for more specificity, isn't there? Uh, do you want to know how their time was spent? Maybe when we consider those first three sentences, why the James family enjoyed um, their vacation, vacation and what did they do, see, and experience? Um, uh, let me show you another example, a little stronger example of a showing example, and let's see what happens here. Follow along while I read this example. The James family, Sally and Tony, and their two children, Ty and Rachel, went on a five-day family vacation to the Black Hills last summer. As they traveled down the highways of South Dakota, they made a list of the sites they most wanted to see. This included 
visiting the Mount Rushmore National Memorial, taking the Black Hill Cave Tour, enjoying a chuck wagon dinner and show, plus maybe a little fishing if there was time. Their first stop in the Black Hills was the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. As the family parked and walked towards the memorial, Ty and Rachel could not believe what they were seeing. They marveled at the size of the faces carved in the mountainside. They were huge. Every detail of each person, president's face was clear and prominent. They spent the entire afternoon exploring the memorial and its surrounding attractions. They took loads of pictures, pictures of the faces, pictures of the surrounding scenery as they hiked over its trails, pictures of the wildlife they encountered, and best of all, a family picture with the faces in the background. And then with the ellipse there, we could add about their uh, issues with the uh, engine light being on in their car from our, uh, our showing example previous to this. Now, do you see how much more specificity has been woven into the details? See how it's become longer in length already because we've taken just um, the three sentences right here in this first paragraph and look how they've been expanded. We now have a paragraph uh, for each sentence and the expansion as to what actually happened to the James family uh, beyond their first stop at the Black Hills. Now, any descriptive prompt lends itself to specificity. It's that use of adjectives and adverbs, and of course, adjective and adverb phrases, which add the details of the writing, um, which allows us to have that specificity. Without the details, your writing can turn just into a list with flat, uninteresting facts. This example with even more specific specificity actually has more dimension uh, than a telling uh, uh, writing piece of writing does. It gives us a more of a, a view inside. Now, as the next part of this quick lesson about show, don't tell, I'm going to share with you a short, powerful video entitled Showing Versus Telling. Now, this... Uh, video speaks specifically about personal narrative. Remember in my introduction I talked about both narrative and descriptive writing need to show don't tell. So the message that this video gives to you or provides for you is offers about adding is very more details is very very per fits our purpose uh, very perfectly. So we're going to move right into that uh, video. You've chosen a topic. You've planned out your events. You've even written a hook. What's next? The next step for your personal narrative is to add details to your events. Every detail that you add must appeal to one of the five senses. Hear, see, smell, taste, or feel. The biggest issue that we see with students in their writing is that they tell us what's happening instead of showing us what's going on in the story. Confused about what that means? Let's take a look at an example. Here's a sentence in a paper. The basketball game was fun. While there's nothing grammatically wrong with that sentence, all it does is tell us what's going on, and it's sort of boring. The reader is left to do all of the work or infer when it comes to imagining what's happening. When we read essays like this, we want to toss them out the window. Let's take that sentence and make it, make it into a showing sentence. It'll be a lot more interesting that way. So, how do we do that? First, let's think about what happens at a basketball game to make it so fun. Some ideas I can come up with are the crowd, the cheering, the food, the players, and the action. That's a pretty good list so far. 
Now, let's take our list and match it up to the senses that it appeals to. Some sounds that I can think of are the cheering of the crowd, the buzzer, the swish of the net, the yelling of the players, the coach, the chants of the cheerleaders, and more. I can repeat the same process with the sense of sight. I could see the sweat on the basketball players, the shiny pom-poms of the cheerleaders, the ball whizzing through the air, and the goofy dance moves of the mascot. I can repeat this process with each of the five senses, but I'm only going to show you two. Now we're going to work together, using the other three senses to come up with some more details to add to our showing paragraph. The other three senses are taste, smell, and touch. Now that you know a little more about showing versus telling, you are ready to try out this technique with your group. Good luck! Well, I want to thank you for your participation. Uh, my wish is that this short presentation has stimulated and empowered you to incorporate some or all of the ideas presented today. Thank you for being with me, and I'll see you next time.